As an alternative to the last texture that we demonstrated, we're going to do the background for stone blocking. So what I'm doing now is using a trowel, a stainless steel trowel, and just pulling a tight coat of the tinted quarry stone on. This will serve as our background for which we will then tape over and create our stone blocks. After the background is dry, we're going to use uh, a narrow tape to resemble the grout line. I'll just finish my last piece of random stone here. This is applied and usually just torn with a finger like that. You can also use a razor blade to get a little finer cut if you want. We're going to take a little bit of the quarry stone now and use it on a trowel rather than a roller. What this will do is give us a little bit more of a uh, variation in our texture. You can go right over the tapes if you like. These will strip out even when the product is dry. We'll just cover a couple blocks first. After you have some material on, you can profile the surface by dabbing the trowel and create a nice random texture. While that's still wet, you can use the trowel to gently pull over it. it creates a nice random texture. Alternatively, you can use the magic trowel. If your angle is too steep on this, you'll, you will get a chatter or scrape too much of the material off. So it's important to use just a very shallow angle for this technique. Okay, as we finish up these last two blocks, I'm just going to show you, you can use other tools besides the trowel to apply the quarry stone as your final coat. Here we're using the six inch roller and applying the tinted material. It's just a little faster method. If you're doing a whole room of these blocks, you may have as many as uh, 200 blocks in a room. So it just speeds up the process a little bit. As we're creating the texture, we're thinking too that uh, the direction of these blocks can change. So a lot of times we'll follow the length of the block just as you would in, uh, in a piece of wood. The grain would follow the length of a piece of wood. The roll itself gives you a texture, but you can also introduce texture by stomping with the trowel, as we saw earlier. Also, we can incorporate this the delicate texture that stippling creates with an inexpensive brush. Notice again I'm following the length of my blocks. And you can use either the lightweight plastic to flatten this texture. I'm starting carefully on the tapes and then gently working with the length. That's one method. And of course, for bigger blocks, you can try to use the magic trowel. Again, just trying to work carefully up against the tapes. There we've got it. When this is dry, then we can overglaze and then strip our tapes out, which we'll get to in another segment. All right, we're going to uh, glaze our ashlar wall here made up of a random series or random sized blocks. Uh, we're going to use the same uh, glazes that we did in the overall wall sample. Again, I can use a brush to apply the glaze color. I'm going to add a second color, which is a little cooler. It's a green made up of black and yellow. And a touch of water if I have difficulty blending the two. 
the water really helps to get the glaze down into the, the pits. I can use cheesecloth. Uh, I'll try a sponge first, but uh, basically this is supposed to be like a natural stone, so we'll try a little cheesecloth here. All right. Now as we work up against the next stone, particularly with the two meat, we might want to make that a little warmer or cooler up along that line, so to show off the difference between the two stones. So. Again, just a little bit of water sometimes helps to color the background. Being that these are all most likely come from the same quarry, you would, you would see the same colors repeating, but uh, it could be a little bit of a variation between each one. So I'm going to float a little green in there to help accentuate uh, this area where the two meet. Okay. All right, as we're finishing off the last block here, one thing to keep in mind as you, as you lay out the pattern for the room is that the smaller your blocks, the more you have to do. And uh, usually, when you're installing larger pieces of block, it's more expensive. So why not uh, use some larger pieces if you can and suggest a more opulent design? It'll make your work easier, and it'll look nice, too. All right. That's the last bit of glaze I wanted to add. I'm just going to finish this off. With some cheesecloth. The other thing, you might notice some of the uh, blocks to my right have a little bit of a almost a white striated appearance. We call that highlighting and that can be done with the clean sponge to remove some of the excess glaze and reveal some of that lighter background. If it's too strong you can always soften it down but basically that's done by just removing some of the glaze with a sponge and then softening those lines up. Alright, well this is one of my favorite parts of the job is pulling the tape because they always look looks better. The quarry stone, once it's dry on the tape, won't crumble off. So this is a very neat uh, process. But you can see how new those lines look. Uh, what we'll do is we'll give this a nice chance to dry and then we'll come back with a sponge and lightly go over those grout lines and uh, just dirty them up a little bit. So we'll let that dry off a little bit and come back to it. Now that we've had a chance for the glaze to dry off a bit, we're going to go back with a somewhat dirty sponge and darken the grout lines just enough so that they don't look quite so new. So we can use the same sponge we applied the color with and that darkens them up a little bit. If you find that's a little too cumbersome, you can also cut a small piece from your cellulose sponge and try to work a little more carefully inside of those grout lines. So basically we're just trying to dirty those up a little bit and make it look more natural. Well, I hope you're already starting to think about your project and how you can use Profo's newest product, Quarry Stone, to get a great designer look. 
You know, you can always call us if you have questions. Or look at our website for more ideas on how you can get that custom look for your clients or for your own home. Well, that completes our Ashler wall.